Hello everybody. Today we'll be starting on the module called From Ideas to Implementation. This module concerns the application of physical theory. The module consists of four main parts. Electric fields and cathode rays, the works of Heinrich Hertz, electrons and atoms, and finally metals and semiconductors. The first part of this module, which we'll be studying today, is electric fields. Electric fields concern the effects of charged particles on other charged particles and electric fields effects on charged particles. This can be used to describe static electricity which is causing styrofoam to stick to this cat. An important fellow in this topic is called J.J. Thompson who was a 19th century scientist. In 1906 he won the Nobel Prize for Physics for his work on cathode rays. So cathode rays are important. Before we can understand his experiments though, or his results, we have to learn something about electric fields and how they work. Now electrically charged objects, such as this balloon, can interact with other objects at a distance, and so we can see this balloon picking up small pieces of paper. We say that the electrically charged objects must be surrounded by electric fields, which allow them to interact with other objects. We've learned about magnetic fields before, and electric fields are somewhat similar but there are a few key differences. Now, when drawing electric fields, like magnetic fields, we use magnetic field lines, which we can see here. Electric field lines can intersect, but only at charged particles. We can see the intersections of electric field lines at these charged particles. While magnetic field lines move from the north pole of a magnet to the south pole of a magnet, electric field lines must move from the positive charge to the negative charge. We can see here electric field lines moving from positive to negative. If there's a single positive charge, then the electric field lines are moving outwards from it, and negative charges have electric field lines moving inwards. A uniform electric field can be created by having two parallel plates, which are charged with a voltage between them. In reality, near the edges of the plates, the electric field is not quite uniform. It's a little bit curved. But so long as the plates are large enough or close enough together, we can assume that the field in the middle is uniform. Having a uniform electric field is very useful because it means that we can study the effects of a field on charged particles without having to worry about the strength of the field. So how do we measure the charge of a particle? The charge in a particle in physics is written Q. It is measured in the unit called the Coulomb, which can be positive or negative depending on the polarity of the particle. Electric field strength is written E. Bear in mind that this is a vector, so it has both direction and magnitude. The intensity of the electric field is measured in newtons per coulomb, or equivalently, volts per meter. The two terms are interchangeable. The equation governing the force on a particle in an electric field is given by F equals QE, where F is the force on the particle, Q is the particle's charge, and E is the strength of an electric field. So let's take this a bit further. Considering the equation F equals QE, and we have an electric field here and two charged particles, we can see that if Q is positive, the F will be in the same direction as the E. And so the positively charged particle will move in the same direction as the electric field. On the other hand, if Q is negative, then the force will point in the opposite direction to the electric field. And the effect will be that the negatively charged particle will move in the opposite direction that the electric field points. Looking at the charged plates, we can see that the positively charged particle is being attracted to the negative plate, and so opposite charges attract. And similarly, we can see that, that like charges repel each other. Uh, how do we measure the strength of an electric field? Well, we've got an electric field here. We have uh, two parallel plates separated by a distance d and we've charged them with a voltage V. Now we can calculate the strength of the electric field in the following way. Uh, we use this equation, E equals V on D, where of course V is the voltage between the two plates and D is the distance between them. Also important in measuring an electric field is the direction because of course it is a vector. And as before, the electric field lines always move from the positive plate to the negative plate. The next thing is electric field energy. 
Now, in a gravitational field, objects have gravitational potential energy, which you've learned about before. The formula for gravitational potential energy is given by mg, which is the force on the object, times h, the distance that it has to fall. In an electric field, charged particles also have electric potential energy. Once again, the electric potential energy is given by the force times the distance that the particle can move. Except here, the force on the particle is not mg, as it was for uh, gravitational energy, but is instead qe, as we can see over here. And so the formula for the potential energy of an object in, a in an electric field is given by qed. Now if the particle moves all the way from one plate to the other plate, then the d in this equation is the same as the distance between the two charged plates. Now we can remember that the strength of the electric field is given by v on d, and substituting this into the equation, we find that the potential energy of a charged particle is given by qv, where v is the voltage between the two plates. Now as it moves, just like for gravitational potential energy, the charged particle's uh, potential energy turns into kinetic energy. So how does this work? Um, we can use the kinetic energy to find the speed that the uh, particle gains as it is accelerated through the electric field. So if it moves all the way from one plate to the other, we find that when we equate the potential energy with the kinetic energy and substitute the expressions for each, we find that qv equals half mv squared, which is of course still the equation for kinetic energy. So taking this equation, let's see what we can do with it. If we want to find the velocity of a particle, that is v, then we have to separate it on one side of the equation. So we start by multiplying both sides by 2, which gets rid of the half on this side of the equation. Next, we can divide both sides by the mass of the particle. And so now, v is on its own on one side of the equation. Last thing that we do is take the square root. And there you have it, an equation for the speed of a particle once it's been accelerated through the voltage. We can also see it over here. This concludes the theory. We have learned about electric fields, how to measure them, and their quantitative and qualitative uh, effect on charged particles. Now let's have some questions to test your knowledge. Question 1. In this diagram, which way will the charged particle move? Now we can remember that the equation governing the effect of an electric field on a charged particle is F equals QE. Now if this is the case, then the particle can only move along the line of the electric field. So right away, we can see that it can't move down, because that would mean that it would be moving perpendicular, and nor can it be up for the same reason. The only options left are left or right. Now, if the particle were to move left, it means that the force would be in the opposite direction to the electric field, and so the particle would be negatively charged. But we can see that this is not the case. Our last option, then, is that it moves right. And because it's a positively charged particle, we can see that the force and the electric field will be in the same direction. And so B is the correct answer. It moves to the right. Remember that positively charged particles always move in the same direction as the electric field is pointing, whereas negatively charged particles always move in the opposite direction. Question 2. Which of these four particles has the most potential energy? Now, we can recall that the potential energy of a particle is determined by how far it can move without stopping. So if you look at, for example, particle C, we can see that it is already as far as it can go. It will be attracted to the negative plate and won't move in any direction at all. So it has no potential energy. Well, what about A then? A will also be attracted to the negative plate and it has a bit further to move, so it does have potential energy. It doesn't have the most potential energy, though. If we look at particle B, 
we can see that instead of being attracted to the negative plate, it will be attracted to the positive plate because it's negatively charged. It will move about the same distance as A, so it also has potential energy, but not the most. If we look at particle D, it will move all the way from the negative plate to the positive plate, so it has the furthest distance to travel out of all the particles here, and therefore the most potential energy. Remember that when dealing with the potential energy of any object, it is determined by how far it can move without stopping. On to question three. Which statement describes the electric field near an electron? Well, let's take a look at the electric field near an electron. The electron is a negatively charged particle, which means that the electric fields must point towards it. Right away, we can see that A cannot be the correct answer because it says that the field lines must point away from the electron. So this can't be the answer. For the same reason, it can't be B. So we're left with C and D. The difference between these two options is that one says that the electric field is stronger near the electron and one says that it's weaker near the electron. Looking at this diagram, we can see that the field lines are close together near the electron, which means that the electric field is stronger. So it can't be D. D says that the electric field will be weaker. The correct answer then must be C. The field lines point towards the electron, and the field is stronger close to the electron. Just like for magnetic fields, having field lines close together means that the field is stronger at those points. Question 4. An electron with this mass and this charge is accelerated through a potential difference of 1 millivolt. What speed does it reach after this? The relevance equation here is V equals the square root of 2QV over M. Now we can substitute the values from the question into this equation. So we take the mass and substitute it for M. We take the charge and substitute it for Q and we take the voltage and substitute it for V. But it's important to note here that this voltage is measured in millivolts and we have to convert it to volts before we can use it in the equation. So it becomes one thousandth of a volt. After substituting this into the equation, we end up with this expression. And as you can see, we've got everything in the proper units. And we can put this into a calculator to find that its speed must be 18,800 meters per second. This is a very fast speed for an electron to reach, and usually it doesn't get this fast because it will collide with air particles before it reaches its full potential. On to the next question. Question 5. An electron in an electric field experiences a force this strong in the direction opposing the electric field, and if it has this charge, and how strong is the electric field? The relevant equation here is F equals QE. Once again, we can substitute the values in the question into the equation. So we substitute the force into F and the charge into Q. After putting these in, we find the equation looks something like this. Now we can divide both sides by this value to find an expression for the strength of the electric field. Using a calculator, this evaluates to be 24,000 newtons per coulomb, or equivalently, 24,000 volts per meter. And I'll just put that result up at the top. Part B. If the electric field is generated by two parallel plates that are one centimeter apart, what is the voltage between the plates? Now the relevance equation here is E equals V on D. We know the strength of the electric field, so we can substitute that for E. And now we know the distance between the plates, which we can substitute for D. But remember, this is in centimetres, so before we can use it in the equation, we must convert it to metres. Once we've substituted these into the equation, it looks something like this. Multiplying both sides by 0.01, we can find that the voltage must be 240 volts. Now we're going to do another question involving more of this equation here.
Question 6. The electric field between two parallel plates is 6 volts per meters. Predict the strength of the field if the distance between the plates is doubled. As I said, the relevance equation here is E equals V on D, which determines the electric field strength. Now when the distance between the plates is doubled, this D in the equation uh, becomes doubled, and this means that the E, the electric field strength, will half. So we can find that the electric field strength goes from 6 volts per meter down to just 3 volts per meter. Part B. What happens when the voltage is tripled? We can see from this equation that when the voltage increases threefold, so must the strength of the electric field. So rather than 6 volts per meters, uh, the strength of the field becomes 18 volts per meters. C. The distance between the plates is doubled and the voltage across them halved. When the distance between the two plates is doubled, the strength of the electric field will half. And when the voltage is halved, the strength of the electric field will halve again. When we halve the strength of the field twice, we divide it by 4. 6 divided by 4 gives us 1.5 volts per meters. Finally, part D. The charge, on the, particle, uh, the charge on a particle placed between the two plates is doubled. Now the charge in a particle is represented by Q, and there's no Q in this equation. So we'll have to assume that the strength of the field does not change. And in fact, it remains at 6 volts per meter. The only two things affecting the strength of an electric field are the voltage and the distance between the plates. This concludes this section. We have learned about electric fields and their qualitative and quantitative effects on charged particles and how to represent them in diagrams with electric field lines.